Hey everybody, what's up? All right, so in this video, it's about React and um, just like what's going on in, in the documentation. And I'm trying to ask you all a question, like what you know, what the f is up with it. Um, but that said, um, I remember the days when we used to care about backwards compatibility and like you know jQuery was popular because it was guaranteed to work across the browsers. And Perl always like up until version six was always about backwards compatibility. So if they added a new feature, it wasn't going to break your existing code. But we know the modern day web development is completely the opposite of that. It's um, it's all based on a million different node modules and any one of those gets updated. And it's not even just the modules, it's the plugins that use a million modules. It's like all the different configuration nightmare that we run into and it's sort of what we get paid to do in a lot of ways. And a lot of it is just like shooting ourselves in the foot. I mean, I've sort of talked about this thing in the past and this isn't even really that much of a bitch. Well, I guess it is a bitch video, but um, yeah, I'm just... Uh, sort of wondering why you know react is the most popular client-side library out there it seems like everybody's using it and we have the Re react 18 version that is now out so react 18 has um brought some changes brought some updates you know the actual library is getting better um we've had hooks and functional components along the way but when i look at the documentation this is the latest documentation from the react website and i'm seeing that for beginners who are going to look up how to use React, it's showing how to use it in the class-based way. But it would seem to me over the last at least five years plus, nobody's writing class-based React code. I mean, I don't really see it. I mean, we used to see it all the time, but then we had hooks and we sort of moved away from it. Once we had hooks, we just were able to do everything in a functional way. And um, and that's what we did, especially as like the uh, you know, ES5 started getting replaced and pretty much browsers are running ES6 by default these days. So that brings up another question too. So even in their documentation that I think is going to lead people somewhat astray from the official documentation, you do have it mentioned if you look up the components and props, there's a mention that you could use functional based components. And like I said, this is what I see in the wild everywhere. But even this isn't really a good example because it's like, why aren't you just using the arrow syntax at this point? Because nobody's really, you know, nobody's targeting ES5. So, and then it says you can use ES6 classes. Well, that's great. But if you could use ES6 classes, why are we using a functional component written in that way? When I would say that the more tried and true approach is that we're seeing the arrow syntax function. So since pretty much everything is running ES6 these days, at least Chrome is, and most people are using Chrome, like if we were to create this hello world using a uh, the, the fat error syntax or the arrow syntax for creating functional components automatically automatically binds to this context all that crap and then we call it um, you get that code working in Chrome right it works uh, out of the, out of the box it's it's not something new it's something we've had for a long time but the documentation doesn't really show that example and I don't understand why the official documentation coming from them is not showing I think the right way of writing react code we shouldn't have like 13 different ways of writing the same library. Like I understand libraries get updated and sometimes code becomes legacy and it has to be updated and ported and all that. But sometimes I feel like we're porting way too much. It was one of the reasons why I remember I made that video about React, Ditch React. I was like, at the time I had like had to completely rewrite a code base that it took us like a year and a half to write because, you know, there were people that, that wanted to write it in the latest React. And it's like, oh, we could just update it easily. And I'm, at the time, I was just like, oh, we just got this thing done, so we're going to go ahead and, uh, and rewrite all this stuff again. Okay, that's that's cool, um, as long as you're paying me, I guess. And for all the people that argue that hooks were better, yes, I understand functional components and hooks, I think, are much easier to write than the class-based approach with the lifecycle methods and all that. But it was a pain having to rewrite that stuff, and hooks do have some downsides as well. So in addition to that, the three, four, five different ways that we have of writing the exact same React code, we also have the fact that you bring TypeScript into the equation. And, and I, I mentioned in the video previously that TypeScript's pretty much taking over everything, and you can write all your React code in TypeScript and probably should be. Um, so the documentation has like little tidbits of like how you can write, you know, and do this in TypeScript or this, but it doesn't actually have like a tutorial officially that is showing you how to write in TypeScript code. Now I have it on my website, but besides that, and, and and other people do it as well. But the point being is like the official documentation, I do think leads people astray when it comes to first picking this project up. It's one of the reasons why Create React App exists because there's so much crap going on with a typical React application 
that React itself does not cover, like things like React Router DOM, React Redux, uh, and other libraries that actually bring in these, these full-scale React architectures, let alone server-side rendering with React. Um, all that said, Create React App is a project that we use because there's so much crap involved for a beginner. But then what you end up doing is, it's like, okay, set up a modern web app with one, by running one command. Um, you're never going to be a programmer that way. You're never going to be a programmer by clicking a button or copying and pasting a, uh, a sentence. You're not going to learn anything, really, in my opinion. You will be able to tinker around and have a buggy-ass app probably that you never know how to update and eventually it becomes legacy because you have no idea what's running under the covers and all that. I don't think it's the best way to learn. I never have. I never liked this project. I do have a tutorial on it. I hate it, though. So here's an example of my own code that is using TypeScript in order to create a component real quick, and, and you have your types for the component that you pass in as props. And this is a functional component using the arrow syntax that I described before that doesn't seem to be in the documentation, at least not clearly. And then you have what is the new import statement with React. So with React 17 and 18, you no longer have to import React into your code base. However, <laughs> If you're running a typical Webpack configuration with, with TypeScript and, and React, and you, you set up your, your configs, uh, your, your TS config for your TypeScript compiler, you set up your Webpack config, and then you come to find out that uh, React is required. Like, why is React required when I thought I didn't have to import it anymore? And it's because of little nuances like this, where in the Webpack config, when you're doing your Babel preset React, you have to add this special... Uh, additional object argument that says runtime automatic. So therefore, at that point, Webpack knows how to compile this TypeScript React through a bunch of loaders, through a bunch of TS configs, to be able to create the actual component that you then see on your screen. And this is an example of that code running. So if you were a newbie and you wanted to be like, hey, I want to learn how to use the latest React 18 and I don't want to use CRA and I want to actually build a project myself, React has a couple of other escape hatches in their, uh, their official documentation. Like one is on Code Blitz or uh, their little sandbox environments, which you'll never be able to build anything uh, production wise with that and certainly not like truly customizable. And then they, you know, you have the, the CRA project, which, like I said, will lead you down a, a, a path of not being able to know what the hell is going on with your code. And then you have a couple of other even worse options that remind me of when React first came out. See, I've been involved in React when it first came out, like 2013, 2014, whatever year that was. I have it on my YouTube videos. I was certainly writing at production level, at, you know, for corporations by 2015. I was, in fact, I was the advocate to bring it to the previous company that I worked for for a very long time. So nobody knew about it. Everybody thought, you know, are we going to use Angular React? And the architect was actually getting my opinion on it. And I was a rather junior developer at the time. And I, I was, you know, a very big advocate for React. And I created some prototypes and showed them. And then he eventually agreed, like, this is much better. Anyway, I've been a fan of React. I've used React. I've made a lot of money with React. I've had many jobs doing React. And I plan to continue to do React. So these are just some basic critiques, I think, of a project that can do a little bit better when it comes to solidifying the web development community so that we can make this a little bit easier so we don't have so many different competing projects that make it a little bit easier and makes it make more sense for beginner developers. So it seems like React is trying to, to capitalize on the beginner developer market, but they failed miserably so far. As another example of that would be something like the fact that React DOM doesn't have a React DOM render uh, method anymore. Re React DOM, and that's another thing that goes back, React and React DOM split into two separate projects, I'm assuming around 2015, 2016, when React decided to make React native and go towards web uh, or mobile apps, and even VR, right? That never really took off. But um, they split the project and, and the React DOM and then, and then React itself. And then React DOM was just strictly about building the JSX elements that are basically building your DOM. That's what React DOM is. That's why it's called that. But it's always had a render method. It had a render method in classes. It had a render method when we turned to the functional approach. React, I think it's 18. Yeah, it might be 17. I could be wrong. I do think it's, it's 18, though. There is, yeah, it is 18. There is no React DOM render method. Now, it's a rather easy, simple fix, I would say, um, to, to solve that issue, but that would throw a beginner through a loop 
like a mug when it comes to all the old documentation where we used to have that method. Uh, I, I just I just wonder why we sometimes make these decisions uh, to make our lives a little bit more hellish. Everything seems easy when you already know it or in hindsight. And that's something you get in with all these arrogant programmers that are out there. It's like, oh, I've been doing this so long and I know this, this, and this, and I'm going to show you how much they know and all this. And for me, it's always about make it as simple as stupid as <laughs> make it as simple as stupid but yeah keep it simple stupid make it as simple as possible don't repeat yourself don't change things around just for the hell of it you better have a really good reason why you're going to break backwards compatibility and make upgrading to the latest uh, uh, more of a bitch you know then there, there should be more of a thought process more of a community effort i think behind something like that but even with the react project i've talked about this in the past i think dan abramoff's still probably running the show over there but the react project itself only has a handful of developers that basically make all you know call the, all the shots and it's always been that way um so this is an example of that react dom render thing throwing somebody through a loop on a create react app project so maybe maybe you do decide to go create react app click a few buttons have your react app running but then you start getting this red warning error message that react dom render is is now deprecated in version 18 but even more confusing than that the thing still compiles. Whereas in any normal React application that's React 18 or whatever, and you try to do React DOM dot render, it's not going to work. So the, the example code that I gave you of my own code is not going to work, but God knows what's going on under the, the covers with CRA for this to work. Um, so all that said, I think in this modern day world that we're living in right now, it's fun, it's a rodeo, it's whatever. Like I said, it's the Wild West. We're shooting our guns in the air and stuff like that. Um, this is the type of thing, though, that I think does you know burn people out eventually because when you have to... And I'm not even saying that any of this threw me through a loop. Honestly, none of this threw me through a loop. I've been doing React so long that this all this stuff is just a minor inconvenience, not even. Uh, but it's because I've been doing it so long. But for anybody that's just getting started this shit is going to be so confusing when you start running into these these questions and you see documentation all over of a million ways to do the same thing that i think eventually kills languages it killed Perl. Perl was a write only language one of the biggest uh, complaints i had with it and granted it was my first language which is always one of the harder ones to learn it was that every time i went to Perl monks or like uh, c uh, c-span or um any of the websites that were related to like Perl, there were there were a bunch back in the day. I, I, I doubt they even exist much anymore. But there was always some creative, crafty, one-liner bullshit way of doing something that should have been much more, you know, just much more verbose, so you know what the hell is going on. You know, there's a difference between like boilerplate, like too much boilerplate, and then too much craftiness. And Perl went towards the creative creative craftiness of the, where you couldn't read your own code. Uh, hell, probably two weeks later. And you certainly couldn't read other people that were trying to be as crafty as possible. And it wasn't beginner friendly for people that didn't have a, like a big C background and understand what Perl was trying to do and the expressiveness behind it and all that. All this said, um, our websites aren't getting that much better. Uh, we're going microservices and you know, we keep going back of like single page apps, have the client render everything. No, server side react have you know better for seo it's like but it, it, we just we're, we're doing all this stuff it's you know it's whatever um it's whatever but i do think the point of this video is that react should actually make their documentation a little bit better a little bit more understandable for the beginner developer if you want the community to continue to dominate and to continue to grow it could just simply be easier and i think that's actually the case with probably most programming projects slow the hell down figure out do you really need to deprecate and break things if it's not necessary or can you gradually upgrade all right so if you're learning how to code if you've seen my latest videos you know i got a little bit of time on my hands these days i got to figure out what to do maybe a little chip on my shoulder again whatever i use that to fuel uh but yeah either way i i plan on um putting a little bit more effort into this i'm gonna try to make it better i already got like 45 plus courses there there's going to be more i'm going to update some of the existings replace some of them add new ones it's going to continue to grow i'm adding a, a podcast i'm 
adding more and more to it. I'm a self-taught developer. I'll teach you everything I know. Check it out. It's one price for everything.